Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Well, I will continue my section on marriage. I have talked a little bit about marriage, I think one or two sections. And so today I'm going to be talking about kind of the historical development. How did marriage start and kind of how it developed. So, which kind of uh, parallels um, the development of male dominance, in a sense. So, here we go. We're going to start in Genesis today. And we're going to start with how God, in a sense, I mean, he never mentioned marriage, created, if you want, the first marriage. And that is in Genesis 2. 24. Now, God created the human being male and female in one. And I already said that he divided them in the second creation account. They were one. And because they were one, he wanted to have helper, a helper for the human being. Well, that means this helper is, if I don't believe Oh, I don't assume that that first human being was a man. The helper is for both of them, the man and the woman. Okay? The man needs a helper. The woman needs a helper. Now, isn't that obvious? Isn't it obvious that the woman needs a helper too? Okay? She cannot stand alone. Neither can the man. So, they need each other. So therefore, God divides. Now, before God divides, he leads the animals to this first human being. But this first human being is not happy with having a mate from these animals. And maybe God did that purposely because the human being had to realize that he wants to have a an equal partner. Okay, Somebody like him or her. Um, somebody who looks like him or her. And that is obvious because um, in 23, Genesis 2.23, the man said, the man said, now that word man, when you look at the original text, means ha-adam. That means human being. So the human being said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man or from man. And that word man, again, is now the word ish. So the woman, which, which is isha in the original text, was taken from, my Bible says out of, but some say from, because from is really a better one. Uh, so she was taken from man. Okay? So that's what the humans, human being said. Now, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken from man. Okay? So that's very important because now the human being is realizing finally I have the partner that I've been searching for, the true mate that I have been searching for. And of course that is a mate for the man and the and the woman because the man was the mate for the woman and the woman was the mate for the man. So here again. Okay, so, but the most important part is 24, because that, I believe, kind of starts this whole idea of marriage. And that says, for this cause. Now, what cause is um, the Bible talking about? What's the cause? Well, the cause is because the man and the woman were separated. That was the cause. Now you don't have 
one being anymore, but you have two beings. And because there's now the man and the woman divided, therefore, or for this cause, a man, okay, in here the Hebrew word is again ish, not ha'adam, because ha'adam means human being. Okay, therefore, the man, not ha'adam, shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, which is Isha, and they shall become one flesh. Right there is, you can say, the first marriage. Now, what happens in the first marriage? In the first marriage, before the fall, the man leaves father and mother and cleaves to his wife. That was the intention of God. And they become one flesh. Now, that word one flesh uh, is not just the physical flesh. It goes deeper. It's more they become one kin. Um, so more one in spirit, soul, in everything. So not just the physical um, union. But they become one kin or one family. Um, re really one body again which is not just the physical, but it includes the soul and the spirit as well. And it's interesting, and I have mentioned that before, they shall become one flesh. That means it's not a sudden thing, but is a continuation. So over time, these two become one. And we know that from our marriage, that over time, people become one. I just heard from a new friend of mine that, and I don't know if that's really, you know, scientific, but that two people, uh, as they stay together, they become really so uh, similar that even their genetic makeup changes and the genetic make makeup um, becomes very similar to each other. And he mentioned that because he said it is best if uh, there's a, a transplant of um, a donor transplant uh, for, um, for organs that actually the spouse is the best um, person to donate uh, an organ to the other spouse just because they are so similar to each other. Now I have never checked into that but it's something interesting maybe to check into and see if that is really true. So it is interesting in that verse though that it says the man shall leave father and mother. Now I have talked about that before too. Because what happened in our culture? Or what, what happened in past cultures? Well, it's always the woman leaves father and mother and cleaves to his man. Okay, we see that even still with Abraham. Okay, Abraham, you would think, is still very close to original the original intent. But um, Abraham was raised in a pagan culture. And so he followed pagan um, rituals, in a sense, when it comes to marriage. And that's what I'm talking about today. And so he, during his time, women would leave father and mother and cleave to their husband, and they become one. But God's intent before the fall was that the man would leave father and mother in cleave to his wife. Now what happened? Well, very simple. The fall happened. Okay? And because of the fall, because of the rebellion of the human being, I mean, I have to say that over and over again. Um, both the man and the woman became selfish. 
uh, became fallen. And the man took over um, the leadership, the dominance. He became dominant. And when that happened, marriage changed. It no longer was what God's intention was. I mean, we can see that in just that one little um, aspect, okay? In that one little aspect, that since the fall, it was not anymore that the father, I mean, that the man should leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, but it was the other way around, that the woman left father and mother. That was not biblical. That was something that happened because of the fall. So after the fall, the man started dominating the woman. And the original intent of marriage was already destroyed. So what followed after that was nothing. Marriage um, never ever um, could or went back to the original tent. The husband and the wife were kicked out of the garden and God said, well, because of that, the man will rule over you. He told that to the woman in uh, Genesis 3.16, that he will rule over her and that her desire will be for him. She will not fight him, okay? She will let him. She allows, will allow him to rule over her. Now, of course, many things happened. Is you know, women um, did bear the children because she had the children. She was, um, and because of her physical um, body, which was not as strong of, than that of the husband, um, she was limited in. Um, her influence, okay? Now, that most likely happened over time, you know, that she did not have the, she could not build her strength in muscles, but she was limited through chi childbearing, and so it was hard for her to constantly build her muscles, and so maybe over time, and that's now my assumption, I don't know if that happened, but I am assuming that's probably what went on. I mean, the man was free. He could constantly uh, use his muscles and build his muscles and build his strength. And, um, and so, so therefore the man came out as the stronger one. These genes kind of just um, continued. Um, it was the, the strength of a man uh, was honored. And actually was important because now he became the protector of the family, protector of the woman, the woman who was now uh, hindered again by the childbearing. You know, she was uh, pregnant for nine months and because of that needed to be protected. She couldn't be physically, uh, you know, active like the man was. Um, and then after she got the baby, she was uh, again hindered because of breastfeeding and taking care of the baby. And again, her strength was kind of limited. And so therefore, she again depended on the husband or the man to support her. Okay. Now she was at home. She was supporting the husband. She was cooking. She was, you know, collecting um, other food sources. So it wasn't that just uh, that she was not as involved in supplying for the needs of the family, but the husband was always the one that did more the, the, the more physical labor things. So it's very important that we see that, that that original intent that God had for marriage didn't happen anymore, okay? It was right there, in a sense, destroyed. Okay, we became, after the fall, the human beings became selfish. They became fallen. They became sinful. They became rebellious. And right then and there, they went their own way. They were kicked out of the garden. 
They were not connected to God. Very few people, if you read the Old Testament, and we don't have too much um, account of the uh, first 2,000 years uh, between um, Adam and, let's say, Abraham. We don't have too much uh, when we look at the man and the woman, their relationship. But we can assume very well that the man was in charge and the woman was um, yes, helping him in a sense. She was doing her uh, part of supporting the family. But he was the one that was fighting, supporting, protecting. Okay, that's just the way it was. Now, did God order that in the uh, garden? No, we don't hear anything. There was nothing, nothing said about that. Okay, matter of fact, let's see what God said. He said, um, they shall rule together. Um, so they, he, he told them that they both are support, both, um, rule over the animals and um you know over over the earth so both of them were doing that there was no division of of labor at that time okay the woman was not uh, there to support the husband um and the, the husband was not doing the major things because um they were eating from the fruits of the trees um, that's what God gave them. They didn't have to uh, really even grow uh, food because it just grew wild and they could just take whatever they wanted. So there was no division of labor there uh, needed. I mean, they were tending the garden, but what does that mean? There were no thorns and thistles at that time. You know, everything was just, um, you know, totally wonderful. Um, so... He says, I will give you, he says, and to every beast of the earth, um, then God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the sur surface of the earth and every tree which has fruit yielding seed it shall be for food to you and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that moves on the earth, which has life. I have given every green plant for food and it was so. And God saw all that I, he had made, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning. Okay? So, and again, he said, God blessed, and that is in 28, it starts in 28, 128. And God blessed them, and God said to them, and that's plural, said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now it's interesting here, this is the first creation account, so it's Genesis 1, and here already, um, he's talking about plural. Okay? Very interesting. And God blessed them, and God said to them, so that first human being, was plural. There were two already in existence, the man and the woman, even though they did not receive, according to Philo, they did not receive their distinct form at that point. Okay? So it's very interesting to see that, that he, both of them, instructed both of them, okay, the first human being, not just the first man, both he instructed, and they were both to rule over the animals and subdue um, the world. So that's very interesting. That is what God gave them. God gave them to eat from the foods. You know, Adam and Eve didn't have to. Well, now I'm using the word Adam, which really later on became, became the name of the first man. But at that point, it was Adam, the human being, both of them, okay? 
So yes, again, that was the first marriage, not affected by sin. But after they left, it was all together different. They were disconnected from God. Okay? They did not have instructions from God any longer. Now, eventually God talks to various people because there were various people before the flood who listened to God. But most of the people, they didn't listen to God. They went their own way. So the way culture developed was exactly like God um, prophesied it. He said the man will rule over the woman. And so the man used the woman as a birthing machine. She was good enough to bear children. And that's how she was protected. Because she was the one that was bearing children for the man. And so therefore the man had an interest in protecting his own wife. His wife became, in many, many ways, the property of the husband. Okay? So she was under the father and then became the property of the husband. The husband paid, in a sense, for the wife. And then came to the man's family. Not the other way around. So you see what happens because of the fall. It twists things around it takes things and makes it puts it upside down so that was not the intention of God but yet for 6,000 years the secular and I call it secular because it's not biblical secular marriage ruled okay in other words Marriage was defined by culture, not by God, not by God at all. We don't hear anything um, in these, for instance, 2,000 years, nothing about even relationships between husband and wife. Nothing is mentioned. Um, and yet we know historically that during that time, the woman um, was subjected to the man, that she was property most of the time of the man. Uh, when we look at various cultures, Babylonian culture, when we look at Egyptian culture, Sumerian culture, the woman was always uh, the kind of almost like the addition to the man. And of course, that also kind of came into the Bible. The Bible understanding, because when we come finally come to um, to Abraham, we actually see the relationship, maybe for the first time that Abraham and Sarah had, and we see that um, Abraham and Sarah have a relationship affected by not God, not by Scripture but by the culture. Abraham was raised in a culture that was heathen. It was not a Christian culture. Okay, his, his father was a, a idol worshiper. And um, we see that in the Bible. And Abraham um, started worshiping the real God, the true God, the creator. And um, God called him. Now, at that point, you know, God doesn't say, hey, you, you're doing wrong with your marriage. Um, you know, you need to change that. But that's not the most important thing for God. God was interested in saving a whole world full of people, a whole, I mean, history of people. He was not focusing on the relationship between the man and the woman. That, that's a minor thing that God um, wanted to address. He wanted to save people first. It wouldn't do any good to start with 
um, oh, hey, Abraham and Sarah, you guys have the wrong relationship. But um, that would be the wrong focus. He was focusing on, hey, I need a Messiah here. Okay, uh, Abram, are you the, will you be the right? And he didn't say that to Abram, but she was checking out Abram and Sarah. Are you guys the right people to bring in forth this Messiah? This Messiah that's supposed to be um, saving the world. So he wasn't interested. God wasn't interested in, in changing marriage arrangements. That didn't come until probably Moses. Moses was then again, when we continue with Moses, we can see that Moses um, gives some kind of interest under the law of Moses to marriage. And we will look at that next time. Um, but right now, um, before Moses, everything was nothing but affected by culture. And that culture was a male-dominated culture because they were disconnected from God. They were absolutely disconnected from God. They were, um, you know, many kind of rough people, rough people. When we look at uh, Jacob and his sons and Jacob and his two wives, Leah and Rachel, we can see. They are rough. Uh, Jacob's boys were rough boys. The 12 tribes of, you know, the 12 tribes um, of Israel. Um, so his, his, his boys, 12 boys, they were rough guys. Okay. His wives were rough. Um, they were jealous of each other. And, um, you know, Jacob had a hard time and um, to, to control these boys. I mean, these boys would sell Joseph, their brother, their half-brother, um, into um, slavery um, just to get rid of him because they were jealous. So it was a rough time. It was a very rough time for these um, early, early uh, uh, fathers that we can call early fathers like Abraham and, and Isaac and Jacob. Uh, you know, and the 12 uh, boys of, um, of Jacob. They were rough people. So they were all not going by God's instructions uh, for marriage. Not at all. Jacob didn't. And neither did Abram, neither did uh, Isaac. None of them. Look at, um, you look at Isaac. Isaac got married to a 12-year-old girl, okay? We would say, oh, my goodness, you know? That's what we would say. Oh, my goodness, how can anybody get married to a 12-year-old girl? But, you know, Isaac did. Um, Isaac did get married to his cousin, even, a 12-year-old girl. So... I don't know. Did he wait until he had sex with her, until she was um, actually older? I don't know. But uh, think about that. Um, so they went by the culture. And Jacob had to work seven years for um, Leah, which actually he thought he was uh, working seven years for Rachel, and he was deceived. And then he had to work another seven years for Rachel. So... I mean, that's not biblical um, instructions, okay? That's not even going back to Genesis, the father, the man shall leave father and mother and cleave to his wife. Um, no, uh, Jacob bought his wives, okay? He had to work for his wife and he bought for his, and he bought his wives. So um, we need to consider that and I will continue a lot more next time. We're going to finish up today because I don't want to keep my videos that long, and this is really already a long one, but it was necessary. So keep that in mind. I want you to really think about that. And think about it. What do you think marriage is? How do you think marriage came into existence? 
how where do you think is the origin okay of marriage because we have so many understandings about what marriage is and usually that is exactly what gets up gets us in most trouble when we get married um that gets us in trouble because we have this preconceived understanding of what marriage is and the other person has a different understanding especially today in our day and age we have different understandings of what each uh, partner is supposed to be doing and that's because we don't have a real definition of marriages not even in the bible okay from the beginning there's no definition of what a man ought to do or what a woman ought to do how marriage ought to look uh, we don't know anything okay and that's because marriage didn't exist anymore after the fall what we have in marriage after the fall was nothing but a cultural arrangement that's all there was there was none of this oneness they shall become one you cannot and i've said that so many times you cannot become one if you're not equal and the husband and wife traditionally never became one never so i will finish here and i'll let you do some of the thinking and then next time i will continue and i'll continue with uh, maybe the time between abraham abraham and moses so how marriage looked then all righty i'll see you later